Yeah, I think it's a very, very, uh, not only interesting, but a very beautiful story of how God intervenes the life of a person. I would call it God's providential care. And Nashuna, she heard the news, she came to see and she sees us in that situation. Like, and she, she broke and she took us over from that day and uh, she became a mother from that day. Whatever is the kind of task that you assign her, you know that she wouldn't say no, she would say yes with a smile on her face. As a filmmaker, I thought her life was extremely dramatic and the story needed to be told. But more importantly, her personality, her life is extremely inspirational. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will sing. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear It was the month of December. The year was 1950. In Kolkata, St. Mother Teresa began her mission among the poor and the destitute. Far, far away, in a small town called Dibrugar in Assam, a girl was born to Philomena and Theophilus Walter Knotts on the 19th day of the same month. Little did the parents know that many years later, their daughter Victoria would not only meet St. Mother Teresa in person and join her congregation as the lay missionaries of charity, but also meet St. Pope John Paul II, the then leader of the Catholic Church. I remember my father who was a well-to-do person and I was a really spoiled daughter of my father. Bishop Marengo, who was the Bishop of Dibrugarh in 1951, remembers Victoria's father as a very affluent man in Dibrugarh. Victoria was sent to the best school in the town, the Little Flower School. But a tragedy struck the family and before long, it completely changed the life of little Victoria. When my father fell sick and he had to be hospitalized, and during, due to his sickness, we have crushed financially and we hit rock bottom. We had to sell off all the jewelry first and then all our house articles, the saris of my mother, and all the furniture, before we could know, I could understand, I saw that uh, we were absolutely without anything. Victoria, who was just eight years old then, realized that she had to earn money for her family. And the first thing I could think of is when I would see during monsoon, the wood floating in the river. I had decided to go and catch the wood and bring it home and sell 
as firewood. And finally, I had enough money to start my own little business. And the business was the Panbiri cigarette shop, which I started off with. That in the evening, since I was doing nothing and I had to wind up the Panbiri cigarette shop because it was on the main road, I couldn't sit there in the night. It was dangerous. So I decided to go and ask the manager in the cinema hall to give me a job. I told him, Uncle, I can show seat to the people when they come in. So I got the job of an asher. I don't remember much about my childhood. My father was very sick and he was totally bedridden. And my mother was pretty young and she had to handle uh, the three little kids. We were very, very young. We are three sisters and one brother. There is a gap of 10 years between Victoria and me. And then my mom and father died and uh, my mother was managing alone. Then within a span of few months, even my mother died. The day my mother died, from that day onwards, Victoria totally took over us. And uh, we never missed a mother because she became, she sheltered us, loved us like a mother. As God willed, within one year, the children became orphans. And it fell upon Victoria to decide not only the course of her life, but also the lives of her siblings. She could not keep us in a house alone. We were small and she had to do something to bring us up. And no her boardings will keep us because I was just two years old. My brother was eight months. Virginia was three months or so three years. So nobody would keep us. So we, we were kept in my auntie's house. And it was such a bad situation that she could not keep us anymore there. So she had to take us away from there. When my father died, the sisters and fathers, the priests and religious, became very anxious about my life because I was working in the cinema hall. And they thought it was very dangerous for me to remain like that, in that environment. So they had asked me to come and work in the convent. At that age, with that kind of an education, what could I have done? I had worked as a uh, servant in the convent. Bishop Marango, in his book, remembers Victoria washing dishes, swabbing the floors, and doing other domestic chores. In the same school that I studied with so much of pride, because that was the best school, I happened to belong, but belong to the school very closely by working as a servant in the convent. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord assures his people that even if a mother forsakes her child, he will not abandon us. And I went to the parish priest and he begged the sisters and uh, we managed to somehow admit them in boarding school. My brother had to go all the way to Shillong because that was the only possibility for a few years. And my sister was admitted in uh, St. Mary's School in Dibruga. We were in the boarding where parents used to come to visit the children every, uh, every second Sunday of the month. And Victoria cannot come. So whenever she would come with difficulty, maybe once a month, twice a month, she comes and collects, she brings a lot of collection for us, a lot of things for us. Small, small, different type of toffees, some toffees which are melted, some biscuits which became soft. Whatever people would give her, she will sacrifice and she'll give it for us. That time, of course, I could not think of my education. Years have passed. And uh, finally, when I was about 17, 18 year old, yeah. You know, it was a big gap between that period and when I finally decided that I should do my class 10. For a girl who had studied only up to class 3, Victoria did not stop to dream the impossible. Determined as ever, she started to prepare for her class 10 examinations. When I uh, found out that what is it to be done that will allow me to do class 10. First, I needed one certificate. Class 3 certificate will not do. Nobody will. It was a, a private examination, which was available that time also. But for that, you needed at least class 6 certificate, if not class 8. So I managed to get a class 6 certificate. And 
um, I applied for the thing and then I came to know that we had to study five years question paper. That was one full, one book, I remember. She knew the secret then? Yes. It was one book with all the different subjects, the combina combinations, and I had to work out that, which was not easy. And then I didn't have time. I would sit in the toilet with zero bulb and study. She is like my fair lady from Dibrugar. She's a small town girl. She couldn't complete her education. But yet today she has got herself educated, did her stenographer's degree and she speaks well English. She knows Italian. She dresses so elegantly. She dances so beautifully and um, she, she can uh, mix around so well with upper society that we cannot even understand that uh, she was from Dibrugar. After her matriculation, Victoria got a job as a secretary in Walford Transport. Then she came to Kolkata to do shorthand and typing course from Mrs. Dungford, a very renowned teacher in Kolkata in those days. It is in Kolkata that she met somebody who would be by her side till death do them part. I met Dennis when I came to do my shorthand typing in Calcutta. I was in the convent and Dennis happened to work just near the convent in one place. And he was, became very interested about me and wanted to have become friends. And that's how it developed, our relationship. Yes, yeah. She used to wear uh, European clothes and she had uh, short hair up to her shoulders, leg, and well, that's that. Maybe that attracted me. I don't know. <laughs> when my to be husband, he said that he loves me and that he wants to marry me. I told him that I have a ready-made family. They are my siblings, but they are more than my own because I have taken care of them from the age of eight year old, eight months old, my brother two-year-old my sister and three-year-old my other sister and my husband disappeared I was very happy but then after one week he turns back he comes back and he says I accept once we heard that Victoria is getting married we were very very upset we were very very hurt because everybody told us once uh, your sister gets married she won't be your sister anymore we came for the marriage we dressed up everything we came to the church. When we came to the church, somebody, I don't know, some unknown person comes to us and tells us, Oh, so you are a Victoria's sister? Remember, Victoria is no more yours from today. She won't love you all. She won't know who you are. She belongs to another family. We were crying. We didn't want to go to the hall. So all were looking for us. Where are we? And then when Victoria came to know that this, uh, something has happened, we are crying. She left her wedding place and she came to us and she consoled us. She said, I am your mother and I will remain your mother. Upholding the Indian tradition, Victoria brought a huge dowry with her. That dowry was her three siblings. With so many people living together, you know, like that. <laughs> Just accepted it. That's how I handled it. We were treated like the family members. My brother-in-law became like my brother. He loved us so much. He sheltered us. He loved us. He used to play with us. And my mother-in-law, she was overjoyed. And finally, these children and my mother-in-law became so close to each other, people would think that they were my husband's uh, sisters and brother. They forgot that they were my, ch my sisters and brothers. We went for movies together all the mischief under Victoria's nose because Victoria was so strict and disciplinarian that we would call her Hitler and avoid her. Mom and dad were busy, they would work. Uh, we would be at home, me and my brother. So my aunts would take care of us, They'd take us to the Hindi movies and more importantly, help us with homework as well. And it was just nice living with my, my grandma, my dad's mom, my aunts, and mom and dad all in the same house. So I did enjoy that. 
Making a home became Victoria's first and foremost priority after marriage. Soon she was blessed with two sons, Patrick and Dominic. I decided that I will not work anymore. I said enough is enough. From the age of nine, I have worked. And that was a saturating point for me. And I said, now I will look after my children. Money was not sufficient. So I would take tuition of ladies who wanted to learn English, conversation. During those days, Victoria heard that the then Consul General of Italy in Calcutta, Dr. Gerardo, was writing a book and he needed someone to take dictations and type the manuscript. Victoria agreed to do this as a part-time job. Suddenly one day he told me, there is a vacancy. Suddenly? In the consulate. Why don't you apply? I said, no sir, I don't want. I want a temporary job and I got it and I have some tuitions, some spoken English, I'm, I'm perfectly all right. I'm earning sufficient. But this is not everlasting. You need a job which carries on. And he was so right. You had such an extended, large extended family. But he would tell me, you are, have got your siblings and your sons. You have great dreams for them. You want to send them abroad to study. I said, yes. But then how are you going to do it? This is the opportunity. I said, no, sir, I don't want. And he was determined that I should apply for the job. One day he came with the application to me and said, please sign it. Do me the favor. He wanted you to join yeah. as a favor. A, a favor. <laughs> when he told me there were two Italians applying for the job, I was very happy. Wow. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus, I said. Really, because I was praying that I don't want to. Someone's praying that she doesn't get a job. Yeah. I, I prayed that I don't want to. And when the interview day came and I went to the consulate, uh, the next day I came to know that those two Italian girls, none of them appeared for the interview. And so you got the job? Of course, there were 15 candidates. But you got me, the job? But I got the job. Blessing. I was so sad. Blessing upon blessing and she was sad. I was very sad. Uh, she has worked in all the different sectors of the consulate during her career, be it in the uh, visa section, be it in the account section, or in the secretariat of the, of the consulate. I'm very grateful today that I had that opportunity to get this job because this job has opened a lot of avenues for my life. Financially also we were well off. Victoria settled into a job in the Italian consulate very easily. This was not surprising as she had gained a lot of experience as the secretary to the registrar of the Debrugger University, a job she got after her matriculation. As the years rolled by, the siblings got married, the children grew up and life looked settled. After I left to go to the States for my higher education, that's when Lavinia, Olivia and Donald had come to live with my parents and my brother who was home at the time. So I honestly never got time or never lived with them, but I, would, I did know that mom had brought them in and they were living in our house. I had gone to visit the family in Shillong and I found this little girl whom I knew sitting at, on the roadside waiting for the brother and sister to come. And I was quite touched by the danger that she would have to go through, maybe. And I didn't want to let it be. So I called the mother and I said, would you like to give this child to me? And she said, okay, if you want to take her, take her. And I brought her and came. After that, I came here. Her brother, after about a month, phoned me and asked me if I could bring him also, take him also. After the consulting my husband, I told him, okay, come. 
the time uh, we were having really tough time like you know i was feeling like oh now i am going to the wrong side mostly that time like oh i was almost getting out of the house but then suddenly like when i got victoria that she like you know suddenly said okay you come over to calcutta so immediately without having a second thought i came to uh, calcutta immediately and that is how donald and his sister olivia became a part of victoria's family third third child actually came three of them together larinia tintin and tatu they were well off people the father was doing well in life but he was shot dead i rushed and i told the grandmother that i would like to take them so we landed up with five children in the house initially when i learned that my mother had um, brought in Lorenia Donald um, and Olivia to live and she said she's got three additional kids i was actually happy they're not any other children they are part of the family two of them are from my uncle's wife's siblings so it, it was good i actually i'm very proud of that but i was not very comfortable she brought them in it came they came ultimately i accept them sometimes with difficulty sometimes without difficulty three siblings two of your own children and three children raised in your family victoria did you never think of finances finance was not an issue at all in life the question was to save these children wow the question is to give them values in life to bring them up as good citizens and we did not die without meal we ha- used to have my three siblings and myself we used to have just muri and water days after days at night before going to sleep just that my god and we were surviving huh? so the criteria is not the food the criteria is what is your concept of life আমাদের একটা গ্রাম অ্যাডপ্ট করা হয়েছিল শাহাপুরে সেখানটায় লোকে খেতে পারতো না মাঠে ঘাটে দৌড়তো তারপর তার ডেরির কাজের জন্য মানে খুব একটা খারাপ পজিশন ছিল তাদের তো এই গ্রামের সঙ্গে ও যখন আমরা অ্যাডপ্ট করলাম এই গ্রামটাকে ডেভেলপ করার জন্য তখন ও গ্রামের মধ্যে যায় ও ওদের যে দৈন্য দশা ওটা দেখে ও খুব মানে ওর সফট করে লাগে এটা তো বলে এটার জন্য কিছু করতে হবে তো তখন ওই বললো যে দেখো তোমরা এরকম মাঠে মাঠে যাও মেয়েরা এটা তো ঠিক নয় তোমাদের ঘরের পাশে ছোটো ছোটো ল্যাটারিং করে দেবো বিক্রি বলে দেখো এখানে এই যে তোমাদের ছেলেরা যে মদ চোদ খেয়ে চোলাই খেয়ে এখানে এরকম করছে এসব চলবে না এই ভাটিখানা তোমাকে ভাঙতে হবে সত্যি দেখা গেলো কি বিক্রিয়ার উদ্যোগে সেই ভাটিখানা ডিমোনিস্ট হয়ে গেছে এরা ভালো কাজ করছে প্রত্যেকেই Khushi. Victoria was instrumental in initiating many developmental projects in Shahapur. She arranged a tractor for the farmers. Young men were given cycle rickshaws to earn their livelihood. Collaborating with the professors from the Kalyani University, the farmers began to culture and export prawns. Experiments on sunflower cultivation were initiated on the farmlands. and soon the village became prosperous certain people do take advantage of her because she's i would say very generous and that i ag- ag- disagree like all our life we go about securing our life uh, ensuring our health ensuring the future of our children ensuring our old age and here is a person who does not think like that she just goes out and reaches to people who need her help and support i mean she could have um, got another house for herself a better bungalow another car but she just lives a very ordinary life and she reaches out to people so every time i think selfishly about myself she inspires me to think to care about another person and that i will not be at a loss I will be compensated.
she wants to give best to my children she wants to she wanted us them to see the world so she took us to paris and full of europe she made us visit because she trusted in god everything else happened god never let her left her he looked after it every moment and accompanied her but especially when there were times when she didn't know what to decide where to go and that i felt uh, through her story that god was leading her so her trust her faith in god and uh, the support that came from so many as a result of this helped her on a journey that's what i feel and uh, that helped her in turn you know to live that love she received to share it with others if you do not do with sacrifice you cannot do anything in life only if you make sacrifice can you do something which is worthwhile with your extras you cannot do anything i do not feel that i should misuse my money first for me living in a more posh place or a posh way or in a higher standard wouldn't make me any better than what i am difficulties that came on her way molded her more because she wanted to be example to her brothers and sisters whatever she did she was thoughtful thinking that her sisters and brothers will look at her and they will follow her footstep so she controlled herself she could not enjoy her youth she could not enjoy her childhood because she wanted an exemplary life to be led in front of us my mommy victoria in my opinion is the strictest mother on this planet <laughs> Victoria as a mother she is very good but uh, yeah as a mother you know she is more strict I get angry very very fast I also cool down very fast and next moment I don't remember anymore but in the bargain maybe I hurt people yeah the love waver sometimes over the years then it's then it settle down again it is quite it is quite difficult sometimes to keep that promise which we made 43 years ago but then as i said earlier that i take it in my stride to go through difficulties and yet face them together and he also had a great support for her so that also uh, has helped her lord jesus christ assures us that he will be with us till the end of the world victoria truly believes this and a life reflects this faith